So I came across a website the other day that was showing a thing called the Archimedes Spiral, uh, which I really liked. And the reason I liked it is two reasons. One is that it was written in Atari Basic, which I have a fondness for. Um, from having learnt basic as a kid um, and also it rendered out this um, this image here which I also remember uh, rendering out as a kid on my computer it took a long time um, and so I thought ah well surely I can um, use an Atari emulator to do the same thing um, and so I wanted to take you through the process of, of basically what I did um, so here I am on my Linux desktop here and I've got installed the Atari 800 uh, emulator as well which I'll just start up here, Atari 800, um, and here it is here. Now I haven't installed any of the ROMs or anything, so I'm just getting the uh, the, the standard, uh, what is it, the, the standard Altera OS uh, ROMs by the looks of it, with this cute uh, little animation. Uh, but the thing that I want is I want to get myself to a ready prompt so I can start typing in this program. Um, so I think if I just hit F5 to reset the machine, uh, I get into... Uh, the, the Atari basic um, sitting there ready to go um, so I'm going to uh, type this type this in um, nicely I'm just going to ignore the comments because the comments don't actually do anything and um, to save you having to suffer through this I'm going to pause this recording and come back to it all right there I have it typed in. Um, so now that I've typed it in, I should be able to run it. And there we go. We can see that it's um, starting to do something very, very slowly. Now over time, it will it will draw this out. Um, this will take a long time. There is an accelerator key that you can press in the Atari emulator. Um, so I can press that now to make that speed up. And there we go. So it actually looks like I've typed in the um, I've typed in the program wrong because it's not quite doing what I uh, want it to do, um, or at least not doing what it's what it's doing in the um, in the in the screenshot here. Um, this flashing, by the way, that's that's happening here. This is the this is the Atari uh, emulator switching into its attract mode. Um, the attract mode is flashing horrifically like that because I've got turbo turned on. Um, I just pressed F12 to turn turbo off, and um, it drops back to the standard attract mode, which changes uh, color every. Uh, I don't know, 10 seconds or, or something. Uh, the attract mode, uh, I think it was intended to serve two purposes. One was to attract the attention of um, people um, who were looking at Ataris and shop windows, but also primarily it was to avoid screen burn. Um, screen burn on CRTs was a was a really big deal back in the day. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to have a look here and see if we can figure out uh, what's going on with the, uh, with the program. Um, but the first thing I wanted to look at was... Um, when I first looked at this the other day, I typed in the program and then I thought, ah, oh, I've spent all that time typing in the program, which as a kid I remember it being a very tedious thing, opening up a magazine or whatever and typing in the, the program and then running it and something like this would happen or at worst you'd get an error or something like that. And you'd end up going, oh well, and you'd turn the computer off and go outside and ride your bikes, play around. Um, but then as we got storage devices, we ended up being able to save our programs and come back to them. So I'm going to have a quick look at uh, how we can now save this program and come back to it. Now when I started the Atari, I didn't, uh, when I started the emulator, I'll just press F1 here to get into the, the settings, I didn't set up any disks or anything like that. So uh, the Atari doesn't have, um, a, DOS isn't isn't here and available for, for me to save onto, onto a floppy drive or anything. Um, but what I can do is um, I can save onto a tape. Um, now the Atari emulator emulates a tape uh, device and we can use that to save this to a file. Um, so we're just gonna just gonna walk through that. Uh, first of all, I'm just gonna hit F5 here to to reset that. And um, if I go L dot uh, to list the program, I can see the program there, along with wherever the bug is. Obviously, there's something here that is isn't right. Um, however, we're gonna ignore that right now, and I'm gonna have a look at the tape management. So jump, jumping back into the settings of the emulator, I'm gonna go down to uh, tape management. And this is now telling me that um, currently there's no tape in the cassette. Um, there's no cassette in the tape drive, sorry. Um, so um, here what I've got is I've got, um, I've made a directory for this called uh, Home Bob Atari. Uh, and currently in here it's got a cassettes directory and there's also a screenshot here. I must have uh, taken a screenshot when I was pressing the function keys. And uh, in the cassettes directory there's no cassettes. 
So as if I had reached over and I pulled out a, a, a brand new C90 tape and I'd taken the, the plastic off it and looked at it carefully and put it into my tape drive, I'm going to uh, virtually do the same thing with the emulator. Uh, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go make a blank tape. And this is asking me where I want to save it. I'm going to save it in uh, cassettes and I'm going to call it uh, space to select the current directory and we're going to call it um, I don't know um, uh, programs and enter tapes description uh, random programs random programs I'll use the uh, uh, British spelling of that all right and I think that's it. So what it's done is it's automatically inserted that tape into the machine um, and now I can actually start working with it. So the way that it works is that uh, Atari BASIC has got, uh, or the Atari operating system I suppose, has got two commands that you can issue from BASIC. One is called uh, C save and the other is called C load. And the way that it works is that when you issue the command it basically starts the tape recorder either recording at that point uh, or loading. And so at this point, I've got myself, I'll just jump back into that, uh, those tape settings. I've got myself a, uh, a tape, a, a new blank tape, and the current position of the tape is it's at the, uh, at the end of the tape. Uh, and so the first thing that we'd normally do when we, we start uh, using a tape on the Atari is we'd make sure that it's rewound. So I'm going to hit uh, enter on this position, and I'm just going to go, uh, because it's got nothing on it, I can't actually change the position of the tape. Uh, you'll see that in a minute. Okay. And I'm going to set this record to yes. That's like uh, making sure that uh, some of the tapes had a, like a little read-write notch on it so that it would prevent you from recording. Um, interesting thing there is that on uh, some stereos, that little notch that had to be removed to record to a tape was actually a physical block to stop the record heads from coming down onto the magnetic tape. All right. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'll just go back and check that. With the tape, it is set to record. Okay, so what I can do here at this point is I can say uh, C save. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this program that's currently in memory and it's going to save it onto the tape. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. Okay, so we get the, uh, that noise is it indicating that it's about to save. It's basically a, a, an audible prompt to you as the user to say, put the tape in, make sure it's rewound, etc. And uh, press record on the tape drive. Um, now on the on the old Atari tape drives, um, hitting record wouldn't actually start moving the heads. Um, what's happening here is the system is waiting for me to press enter, and then when I press enter, it will start the recording process, record the current uh, program onto the cassette, and then stop the tape drive. Um, so if I press enter now, uh, there it's happened instantly. But back in the day, you'd hear a series of uh, beeps and boops as it. Uh, takes this program and it encodes it into audio track onto the cassette itself. Okay, um, so we're going to have a look now, go back into this tape management, and I can see here that the position of the tape is now at the end of the tape, but I have six blocks on the tape. So this program has taken up uh, six blocks, whatever a block is defined as. Um, so now what I can do is I can actually uh, turn off my Atari and then I can reload that program. Um, from the cassette. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to, how am I going to do this? Um, let's have a quick look. I'm going to do a cold start, a reboot uh, of the Atari Shift F5. Okay, so that brings us back to this um, the start point, and I'm going to do a uh, hit the reset key, F5, and ah, my program is gone. However, because I've got that tape and it's still in the cassette, I can I can load it. Um, now the companion to C save is C load. Um, if I try this right now, there's the uh, audible prompt saying, "Hey, I'm ready to load something." And if I press enter, it's going to give me an error. And the reason for that is that if I go back into tape management here, the tape is still at the end, so I need to rewind the tape. So this is the same as reaching over to the cassette drive and pressing the rewind button on it, letting the tape rewind back to the start, and um, then hitting stop. So now what I can do is you can see this um, you can see this position indicator. We can actually change where it's positioned, and the reason that we change where it's positioned is that uh, you can save multiple programs on a tape. Um, 
and normally what we'd do is we would make a little note of the uh, the cassette counter, the little three-digit uh, roller that would that would roll over as the as the tape um, recorded to or uh, rewound, fast forward, etc. And it had a little reset button as well that you could push it to settle the numbers back to zero. Um, just a, a standard mechanical thing. In fact, Atari cassette. Let's have a quick look at what it looks like. Cassette drive. Here's one here. Uh, the one I had was uh, I had I had this one here. Uh, what is it? It's called the the 1010. Of course it is. Atari cassette 1010. Let's have a closer look at it. Right. So you can see here. Uh, where's a where's a good shot of it? Uh, here we go. So you can see here from the top. Um, or you buy it for a hundred dollars, but you can see here from the top that it's got this little, um, this little, this little counter and a reset button. Um, so yeah, we can we can reset that. Um, actually, what I'm going to do here just to illustrate that is um, I'm just going to I'm not going to rewind the tape at this point. I'm, instead, I'm going to leave that where it is. And um, currently, I don't have a program in memory, um, so I'm just going to do I'm just going to type in um, our favorite program that we that we all loved to type in back in the day, um, and it's going to go like this: print. Hello world with a semicolon on the end and it's going to go 20, go to 10 and when I run it uh, we get this kind of thing going on. Cool. And because that is um, awesome intellectual property I'm going to make sure that I save this for future uh, future reference. Uh, so I just pressed F5 which resets the Atari and type in list again and there's my program. Now I'm going to go C save. <laughs> There's the uh, audible cue that I can start recording. If if I had my Atari, I'd reach over here and I'd, I'd hit uh, record and play at the same time, and then press enter, and now it's saved it. Um, and so if I jump back into the tape management, you'll see the tape is now at uh, position eight on the tape. So the the tape has no idea that it has these two programs on it, but the Atari will load a program until it gets to the like end of program. Uh, marker on the tape and then stop the drive. Um, so it is possible to um, to index the, the tape, I guess, have a look and see what the programs are, but it is a manual process. You have to load a program, have a look at it, uh, load the next program, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's no naming of the individual tracks. Um, the thing that I do have here is um, um, when I when I made this blank tape, I gave it a, I gave it a description here of random programs. That's the equivalent of actually getting out a biro and writing on the label of the tape itself. Right, so let me get back my broken Archimedes spiral program. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to lean over to my Atari 1010 and I'm going to uh, hit the stop button and then hit rewind. So virtually in my emulator, I'm going to go uh, position and I'm going to rewind it back to the start. There it goes there. And I'm going to now go C load. Okay, audible cue saying it's about to um, about to um, do stuff. I'm then going to lean over here and, and uh, hit the play button on the Atari on the uh, on the 1010, which will do nothing, but it'll cue it up to start playing, and then press enter. Uh, again, happens immediately because we're in the emulator, but that would take a bit of time as the as the tape kind of wound around. And here's our program back, and there we go. Uh, so that's the gist of, of how that works. Um, oh, and in terms of that second program, uh, if we go back to, if I now go, um, I'll just do a, a cold start on the Atari and go back to tape management. So it has actually remembered that the tape was, was here at this point. Um, and I'm going to see if I can load that um, Hello Hello World program as well. So um, get back to basic, C load, enter. Right, and there's our Hello World program. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, whatever they say. Okay, see ya, bye.